on too. Yeah, they can see you. Or oh, you want an apron on too? Yeah. Okay. He wants an apron on too. Hang on. I'll see what I have. It has a little fit. Well, ugh. let's see about this, will you? We're gonna make it fit you. Yeah. This one is Breeze. So. He's gonna wear your apron, okay? That's fine. See? Oh, it's beautiful. There we go. Yeah. We're gonna get it all tied on. How's that? Is that good? Yeah. Okay. Just a minute. Okay, let's tie it on. Okay, he's got his apron on. Do do do. <laughs> okay, so. I would usually say my hello greeting, but apparently <clears throat> for some people, Renee, if you're still watching, hi, uh, I'm not going to say my regular greeting because apparently she is the one out of almost 10,000 people who have viewed my healing tooth videos and can't handle my intro repeatedly. So I hope everyone is doing well tonight. Uh, I'm glad everyone is here. And we are going to make some other pork chops, and William's going to help me because he's cute. <laughs> right, Will? Okay. Um, I did want to talk about one thing, though, that also relates to Renee, just in case she's on my channel still. So, Renee, Renee had a question. Uh, that's, I'm just going to say it's a question. Um, so, Renee asked, uh, or made the comment that I, uh, it's on one of my healing teeth videos, that I get all of my nutrients from a jar. Because for healing my teeth, I am eating cod liver oil and taking extra liver through capsules and taking emu oil. All of these things I listed out inside my, one of my cavity healing videos. And she was upset or whatever. And I was thinking that she needed to say that the Weston Price Foundation recommends food, not nutri nutrients out of a bottle, and that I should just be eating fermented foods and raw milk and all of those things. So she's obviously new to the channel, so welcome to the channel, Renee. We have lots of love here. And um, so here's my response to that. My response to that is everyone is different when it comes to their need for vitamin K2, MK4, along with all the other nutrients, okay? And so we, all of us need different nutrients on a regular basis to maintain our bodies in general. Now, the level that you need when you're healing your body is much higher than a regular level just to maintain. So I went to, if you haven't watched the rest of the videos, Renee, I went to my naturopathic doctor and she was able to print off exactly what, through some testing, exactly what my body needed more of. And so instead of me sitting around and eating um, tons of liver nonstop and drinking gallons and gallons and gallons of raw milk, <laughs> stop it. No one wants to see your lazy eye. Um, I choose, this is my personal choice, to take extra liver capsules and take, get extra vitamin MK2, MK4 through emu oil and fermented cod liver oil. And I, I choose to supplement myself more than eat a ton more than what I'm already eating. If you're going to keep doing that, you're going to have to go over to the other building. Okay. Okay. He does that with his eye. He can control it. Just in case anyone's going to make a comment, he does it for attention. So, it shouldn't happen anymore, right, William? Okay. Um... So that is my choice. That's how I'm handling my tooth healing uh, journey. And when my cavities are 100% healed, which I'm pretty sure they are, I just have holes left. There's no pain. Um, it just is what it is. Um, then I plan to go back to the regular recommendations by the Weston A. Price Foundation on the consumption of food. But until then, I 
plan to continue those same uh, recommendations and continue to take the extra supplements that I know my personal body needs in order to heal. That's all I'm going to say. Thank you for watching my videos, Renee. I don't get paid for my channel. Um, so I'm trying to respond to your comments with love instead of in haste. Um, so that's it. Okay, no more Renee. We're going to move on now. <laughs> All right, so we are making some other pork chops. I'm so glad you guys are here. My little rant allowed more people to jump on, and I'm grateful for that. Um, I've had a really, 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 really crazy 24 hours. We had our last goat give birth to twins, and it was a really hard labor, and I ended up having to assist, and one of the kids, it's twins, and one of the kids, um, is doing a little worse than the other one and it wasn't the one that was stuck into the birth canal wrong It was the one that was trapped behind it So um, my day's been nuts is what I'm trying to say So that's why my hair looks like this is because well, I didn't even brush my hair today because it's just been nuts So we're gonna go ahead and make a meal now. Are we ready? Okay <laughs> And William is here to help and be cute. All right some other pork chops. Here we go So this is a fairly quick meal. I've already washed. Yes, they're washed um, five potatoes for the kids to eat this little mixture on. I'm going to preheat my oven to 425 degrees. And I'm just going to go ahead and put the potatoes in the oven so they can bake. We're going to watch well. There they go. Okay. And then for my husband and I, we're going to pour this pork chop mixture over some frozen green beans. I'm going to steam them in this pot. So I'm going to get me some filtered water. William is starting to peel the onion. So we're going to let him peel the onion. <laughs> I'm just getting some water. I'll be back. Don't, don't get off yet here. You doing okay, William? What's that called? Onion. It's an onion. Okay, so I'm just gonna start my back pot here over high heat, well, medium high probably, and I'm gonna dump some green beans in there. Whoops, sorry guys, bumped the camera. This is a pretty darn quick meal. Okay, so that's gonna come to a simmer all on its own, no big deal there. The next thing we're going to do is, with, I always use my Dutch oven, you don't have to, you just need a large pot. And we're going to go ahead and turn this over medium heat. Since it is cast iron, we don't go over medium heat with cast iron because it retains heat and it gets really hot. That sounded really healthy. Okay, I'm going to go grab some butter, okay? You keep peeling the onion. All right, he's really peeling it. <laughs> A lot of times I just delete uh, negative or nasty comments because I really don't want, I could have a response, a public response to some of them. But I don't want to waste my time um, stooping down to a level that is negative with my own health. Um, and so typically I just erase them, which is why you guys hardly see any of them. I don't get a lot of them. This community is actually like totally accepting and loving and um, is wonderful. <laughs> but um, most of the negative comments I get, I just delete. Um, I'm not really sure why people think they need to leave negative comments. For me, myself, if I'm on someone's channel and they do something that I don't approve of, and it disturbs me enough where it's just like <coughs> nails on a chalkboard, I just click off the video. Like, I don't leave a nasty comment before I leave. So, um, but anyway, that's just me, I guess. <laughs> it, but that's once again feeding into the energy of negativity. And I just choose not to do that anymore. Time is so short with our lives. Right, William? Okay, so we're melting. This is probably, it's a lot more butter than what the recipe calls for. It's probably five tablespoons of butter in that back pan there. I'm gonna be cooking up three pork chops. 
he's peeling that <laughs> onion. And we're, I'm gonna go ahead and start chopping um, five garlic cloves while he's peeling an onion. What are you gonna do next? You got all the skin off, what's next? What do we do with the onion next, buddy? You know? Cook it. Cook it, okay, so what does mommy have to do next? You know? Cut. You got, do I need to cut it? Okay. You cut this lip. You, you want me to cut the end off? Yeah, cut okay. the cap. That's okay. You have a finger. Now it's going to make, see, it's smelly. Do you want to maybe move because it smells like an onion? Yeah. Okay, let's, let's, uh, where do you, where would you like to go? Right there. Over there? Okay. We'll slide you that way. Ready? So I don't want it to burn your eyes. Up. Okay. You go right there and mommy will chop, okay? You can peel the garlic. Good job, William. You're really helping. Very, very, very nice. All right. So anyway, it's been a very, very, very busy 24 hours. If you've emailed me or if I told you I would email you or something, sort of some sort of correspondence, and I have not, it is literally because yesterday's whole birth thing with the goat, I was up till 11 o'clock last night. Um, trying to get both of the twins to nurse. Um, how, how it was just, it was a really off? hard birth. Go ahead, honey. Okay. Yep, mommy will cut this off and then you can peel the rest. There you go. Here, I'm going to bop it too. Ready? One, two, three, pop. Okay, now you can take it off. Good job. Um, so anyway, I was up till 11 o'clock, so I'm tired. And I got up at 6.30 this morning to go out and do the same, make sure that they were up nursing. Um, and the one little one is struggling more than the other. It was just a tough situation. So anyway, they're both still alive. They both seem to be going in the right direction. But it has made my life quite crazy. So, okay, so if you, like I said, if, if you emailed me and you're waiting for a response or I was supposed to email you, or some sort of correspondence and you haven't heard from me, that is why it has been nuts. Which is fine. We, we got two rollings out of the birth. And like I said, they're both still alive as of now. And that makes me very excited because that takes our on-the-farm uh, dough total to six. And we plan to keep all of those. So we'll have lots of milk next year. We're super excited about that. Hey, I'm trying to get it off. Okay, here. Let me just take the take the little side off. Okay, want me to bop it? Yeah. Okay. There you go. You peel it, William. That way I'm not going to come Ooh, off. It's getting onion in you here, baby. I don't know why it's um, not, not coming off. No. Well, it's because, you know, it it's protecting the clothes. Yeah. I yeah. It's, it's protecting it, and so that's why it's on there and it won't come off. Is because it, that's the job of the, the skin of the garlic is to protect it. But, but, but I don't know why it's that. Um, because garlic lives outside, just like onions live outside, see? So they have to have their clothes on. And the clothes are the skin. Yeah. They're how to get moved. How do they get new clothes? Yeah. Um, do you see all the layers on the onion? Yeah. See, you need to take all this off of one onion. Those are all of its clothes. So instead of its mommy doing the laundry, it just keeps putting on new ones. Oh. Yeah. Okay, you want to put that in the compost? No. No? Okay, I'll do it. <laughs> thought maybe you would want to. Usually I save this stuff for broth because you can save the ends of your onions and the ends of your garlic and all the skins for broth, but I'm not currently making any broth. And honestly, I'm just really tired tonight, so I was just going to go to the chickens. That's not going to go The chickens will eat it and then they're going to turn it into eggs. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I don't want to eat that. I don't want to eat Oh, that's okay. You don't have to eat it. Yeah. Okay, so this is just sauteing back here. It was one yellow onion and... And then we are going, oh, where'd it go? What happened? Hey, what thing? Um, that is a pork chop. I'm going to take it out in just a minute. The next thing we're going to add to our pan 
our sliced mushrooms. If you guys watched my last month Azure haul video, I bought like 10 pounds of mushrooms. I chopped them all up and froze them. Um, so that's what this is. If you're going to be chopping them up fresh, you're going to look for about an eight ounce package of um, mushrooms. Yeah, this is going to be yummy. Are you excited? Yeah. Let's stir it. Okay, so now we got to cut up our pork chops. I had started the um, the uh, what, what do you call it? Hang on, my brain. Hang on, don't touch it. Yucky, you're going to have to wash your hands. Don't touch it. Yuck, yuck, yuck. It's got blood. I had started the routine of soaking my pork chops, and I had planned to do that last night. Soak them overnight uh, to make them more digestible and compatible with the human body. But you guys, with the birth and everything else, I just, yeah, we're just going to eat them like this. It'll be okay. <laughs> but I do realize that marinating them the night before would have been a good idea. That was a pig. That was a long pig. Um, it was a big pig. Did you get to see the pig? No. No. Me either. No, I didn't see it. Do you think the pig had a name? I don't know what name. I don't know. I don't know. We named Charmin. I don't know. You think it's name was Charmin? Yeah, we named Charmin. I don't know. Shiny? Uh, no, I don't. I think it's Charmin. Charmy? Charmin. Charming? Yeah. Oh, like our goat? I don't think that's. This was actually a girl pig. Oh. Do you know how I know? Because I talked to the farmer and I told him I wanted a pastured pig that was full of lots of fat so I could make lots of lard. Is it, is it, is it a long pig? A long one? A long one? I didn't get to see it alive. I think it long. Oh, okay. Well, so the farmer said, if you want lots of fat, I have the perfect pig. She is a big one. So when some that means it's a girl. So it was a girl pig. But she was out on pasture. She was living a happy life. Converting all the wonderful vitamins and minerals into healthy lard for us. They said that we eat a lot of corn. Uh, I don't think, well, maybe a little bit of corn, but they didn't eat any soy. Is that what you were going to ask next? Are they soy free? They're soy free pigs. They got sick. No, no, they didn't get sick. It was just that was what. It, remember how we talked about the other day how every farm animal has a purpose. All of our farm animals have a purpose. Remember, Mommy said sometimes the farm animal's purpose is to provide nutrients for us. So this pig, its job was to provide nutrients for us. Its job was to grow big and convert grass into nutrients for you and I to eat. That was her job. She she did it, didn't she? She did her job. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Now yeah. Yeah, one one of her now she's dead. But you know what? One day you are gonna grow up and you're gonna have a big purpose in life. And you're going to fulfill it, and then you get to die, and then what happens? You go to heaven. Right? Ooh, don't fall down, buddy. So we all have a purpose. Even the animals have a purpose. The pig lived a nice life. Very happy. It's a happy pig. With happy lard and happy meat. Hey, I was... Maybe not, not, not when I died. I know, but you know what? God had a different purpose for Benjamin. And that's okay. Where did Benjamin go when he died? Up in heaven. Up in heaven, that's right. But, but not in a bad place. Nope, he didn't go in a bad place. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So let's talk to let's talk to everybody about what to look for when they're shopping for pigs since we're just chopping pork chops. 
So, just in case you are new to the idea of buying a happy pig off of a happy pasture, some of the questions that I asked my farmer were, I'm going to go ahead and turn this off because it's taking me a little bit longer to, to chop up than I was planning. I'm answering all these deep questions about pigs dying. Um, <laughs> but when I talked, when I was looking for this farmer, there are some things I specifically wanted for my family. Now, I'm not saying everybody can afford this or that everybody, this is a standard for everybody. This is my standard for my family. So when we bought our farm here, we decided that we were not going to allow soy on our farm. That is the reason why I mix all of my own <clears throat> chicken feed by hand, because even organic chicken feed has soy in it. Um, but we chose that we were just we were done eating soy if at all possible. I know sometimes we eat out about once a month and it probably has soy in it. But we wanted our main diet and our farm to be soy free. Um, I'm not really sure. So, some of the, one of the questions I asked the farmer was, are your pigs fed soy? And the answer was no. So that was an amazing thing. The next question I asked this farmer was, are your pigs out on pasture? And he said yes. That's a good answer. Um, and then I asked, what are they eating in the pasture? And he answered me and said that he was seeding the pasture with things that would be typical grain plants, but that the the um, pigs eat those as well along with the grasses and they're rotated that's another good thing for a pig so every time that their area gets muddy and they run out of grass and plants to eat and they eat all of their feed they get moved again um and then i think those are the only things that well i asked if they were you know <coughs> poked with anything or injected with anything those are important questions Usually somebody who raises pastured pork is not going to do those things. Um, and so that's where this pig came from. That's what you want to look for when you are searching for pig. Um, you don't want to be buying pig that's in a confinement situation. Okay, there we go. All these bones are going to go out to the dogs. So I keep saying that in some of my videos. So all these bones are going to go out to the dogs. Um, and I, just so everyone knows... I worked in a veterinarian hospital in Northern California for almost three years. Um, it's actually, the, it was at the time the largest veterinary hospital in Northern California. And I can tell you from working there for almost three years that raw bones are perfectly safe for your animals to consume. Even cooked bones are perfectly safe if they are, if they are cooked for long enough. So whenever you're making bone broth and you're cooking them for 12 to 24 hours, uh, 12 hours for chicken bones, 24 hours for um, beef bones. Those bones are safe enough to give to your animals. Um, but the ones that are not safe, that um, can splinter and um, puncture through their guts and their stomach, are the ones that you would be quickly cooking. So if you're baking something, that would be a no-no. <clears throat> or frying a steak, that's a no-no. Um, anything that's the meat and the bone was cooked on a high temperature and it was a very quick cooking time. <clears throat> Those are the bones that will cause damage to your animals, but raw bones are perfectly safe. The other options I could keep these bones, throw them in a freezer bag and make a broth out of them. I just figure my dogs can have a nice nutrition, <laughs> nutritious snack tonight. I can't even think about taking on one more thing, you guys. <laughs> I got like five hours of sleep last night. And that was, um, that would be at the most because I was worried about these goats not being able to get up in the middle of the night and nurse. It was just kind of wild. So I can't even think about throwing them into the freezer at this point. <laughs> so they're just gonna go out to the dogs. <laughs> We're just maintaining. Yeah. Are your eyes burning from the onions? Sorry, buddy. Okay, so this was, um, I think four pork chops actually. One of them was kind of small. So, I think I wash my hands. Okay, go into the bathroom and wash your hands. I'm going to go ahead and turn the burner back on over medium heat. What's wrong, buddy? I want to see I Yeah. My eyes. Okay. So this is back over medium heat. I'm going to add all this pork to the... Go to the bathroom and do it, okay? I'm going to add all this chopped pork chop into my um, pot. Well, I can't remember the name of that. <laughs> I literally forgot that I had a live class like five times today. 
I'm gonna go wash my hands. It's been a wild day. So we have a theme with our goats here on the farm. All of the females that we're going to keep on the farm as milking goats are named after flowers. So we had our original three females that were named Buttercup, Lily, and Daisy. And then we had one doling that was born uh, about a month ago. And that one was named Morning Glory. And now we have two twin dolings from last night. And so their names are Tulip and what was the other one? Tulip and Dan, uh, not Dandelion. What's another D one? Uh, Daffodil. Daffodil and Tulip. Whoops, that's not what I wanted to do. I'm going to turn that off. All right. So we got all uh, flower names on the goats. And Kathy, I started the video because I know you wanted to see a video of the goats jumping around. And I have some footage of that. But then this whole goat birth thing happened, so um, <laughs> I haven't had a chance to edit it or add more to it. I kind of want to add, like, little segments of the goats jumping around because they're so cute. Um, and, like, put them all together so it's, like, an enjoyable short video to watch of a whole bunch of cute moments. <clears throat> but it will be coming out, I promise. I started it. I'm going to go ahead and turn off my beans back here on the back burner. They've been simmering slash boiling for a while, and they're definitely done. Ooh, the oven's probably preheated to 425. What are you doing? They're still there. All those people are still there. I bet you, I know, I know Kathy's on. Sharon's here. Hey, Sharon. And I wonder if Jackie's here. Did you get your eyes cleaned out? Yeah. Okay. Did you get your hands washed? Do you not have any more onions on them? Yes. No, no, okay, go wash your hands and then we'll have some milk. <laughs> okay, you <Use> soap. <laughs> so this video is like, this video slash meal is super, super easy, you guys. It's like I said, butter, onions, mushrooms, we sauteed it, now we're adding in the pork, which we're just going to saute it till it's cooked. And then we're gonna make a super quick sauce. It's so easy. I better go get the milk so I'm ready for him when he comes back. William, do you want goat milk or cow milk? Cow milk. Cow? Okay. No, no, no. Goat? I don't want to No, no, back here. Yeah, there's like a little bit left with the little pass on that. I'll get the goat stuff. has ordered uh, cow milk tonight, this big William. <laughs> All right, I'm going to shake it because the cream goes to the top, unlike goats. Goats. Yeah. I goat milk. I know. I'm surprised you asked for cow milk. I like goat milk. Yeah? I hate like goat milk. Tastes like goat milk? I don't taste like cows. Cow milk? Yeah. Okay, let me get a couple of jars. Yeah, he puts it into Ticino. Okay. Yeah, but I like Tino. Okay. I like Did you wash your hands good? Can I see? Oh, they look good. Okay. Let's get some milk then. And then we can use our glasses, remember? And, remember? and if we don't, then it kind of mad. I know. Okay. So we're still getting a gallon a week of cow milk from our raw milk farm to support them more so because we're getting plenty of goat milk. <laughs> um, so this is kind of a treat because we don't usually drink cow milk, do we? Okay, are you ready? Here we go. 
Thank you. You can drink it all just like that. You good? Yeah. Okay. You want to show them your, your mustache or are you going to lick it off? <laughs> Alright, we're just sauteing over here, guys. We're going to stir it again. Waiting for the pork to cook all the way through. <laughs> There's a moo mustache. <laughs> you going to drink the rest? Now show them your mustache. <laughs> <laughs> You're silly. Okay. I was going lamb. <laughs> okay, drink your milk. All right, I am going to start filling up a two cup measurement with some sour cream. I'm not sure I'm going to have enough inside the container. Does that milk good, William? Do you like cow milk better than goat milk or goat milk better? I. Goat milk and cow milk. You like them both equally? Yeah. Yeah. Who's your favorite goat? Charming. Charming's your favorite goat? Yeah. Aww. Should we say that one? Is he cute? You like him? Is that why? Yeah. Is he pretty or what? I don't like him. You don't like him? Yeah, he said that he's black. Yeah. I said he can't eat the around. Okay. Sharon says William is looking particularly adorable tonight. <laughs> Do you want a little more milk? Yeah. Okay, but you can't tell us sissies. We don't need to run on milk, you know what I mean? Yeah, but if we... Although we have extra milk, so it wouldn't be in the world. If we run out of milk, we have to tell you milk. Right? No, then we're going to have to go milk a goat, huh? Yeah. Yeah. We were buying five gallons of milk a, a week of raw milk. So us going down to one gallon is quite the jump for the farmer. Yeah, huh? Hey, what? What did you come from... Just a minute, I gotta get some more sour cream. I'll be right back. The milk came from a cow. Ouch. The milk came from a cow. Did, did it? Yeah. Did it come out of the body? Yeah, it comes out, comes out of like, like the goat, you know, the udder? Yeah. That's where it comes out on a cow, too, is underneath their stomach. Anyway, it's a crazy thing when you are homesteading and you're trying to grow more of your own food so you have control over your family's food supply. And we've been striving and looking forward to having goat milk on the farm for so long, almost a year. And it's just like, it's like a torn feeling because I love to support my local farmer, and I hated to tell him that we would be going down to one gallon a week. Um, but this is what I've been pushing so hard and striving for, is to be, <laughs> to be more self-sufficient, to have more control over my family's food, and to depend less on outside inputs. I'm not a crazy person that thinks I can go and not have any outside inputs. I don't think we were made to be like that. Okay, buddy. <laughs> um, I think we need community. I think we need each other. Um, but I want more stability and more um, security in my family's food. So it's just one step closer, but it was really hard to tell the farmer that we'd be getting you know, 12 less gallons a month. Okay, well, you're cute. Okay, so the pork is cooked. Um, it's no longer pink. Um, how about you just use a towel? 
You need to get rid of your mustache on your face. Okay. Okay, so this is already, what's going on? Whoa. You okay? This is already cooked. So we're gonna go ahead and take out one cup of my homemade broth. So homemade, this is homemade meat stock. The homemade broth, homemade meat stock is supposed to be kind of jelly, if you guys can see that. Um, this came out of the, this came out of the refrigerator. This came out of the refrigerator. Um, and that's why it's gelatin like that. Just a, just a sign of a really, really good, good broth. Okay, is one foot, ooh, it's gonna, it's gonna fit. One cup of homemade broth, or you could use your store-bought. One and a half cups in there, total. There it goes, okay. One and a half cups of broth, we did it. That was easy. My dad has like one of those buttons that you can push and says, that was easy. I like it. How long can you keep your gelatin in the fridge? So. This is broth or meat stock, okay? There are a lot of people like, oh, you have to use it right away, you have to can it right away. Honestly, this broth has been in my refrigerator over a week. Um, I go by the smell test, personally. If it doesn't have mold growing on the top and it doesn't smell off, that's not mold, by the way, that's fat on the top, um, then I still use it. I think the longest I've let broth go inside my refrigerator was like two weeks. Um, we never got sick. I think that if you're like switching from a fully processed yeah, yeah. diet over to something from scratch, maybe your system's a little more sensitive to stuff that's been sitting in the refrigerator. But um, we've done it multiple times and we're still here, I guess is what I'm trying to say. <laughs> yep. Okay, so now it's got broth in there. And we gotta find salt. Here's the salt. We're gonna do two teaspoons of salt. We're using colored salt, okay? I don't know if there's two teaspoons in there, but we're gonna eyeball it. And the reason why we're using colored salt, oh yeah, it's two teaspoons. The reason why we're using colored salt is because the color is the minerals in the salt, okay? And the minerals is what helps your body to handle salt without having weird swelling and stuff from consuming hey, salt. Daddy, yeah, we'll have to fill it up. It's okay. Would you like to fill it up? Yeah. Okay. Rita, I saw your comment. I'll be with you in just a second. He wants to fill up the salt, so I'm gonna. Okay. You know what? You know what? Um, do you want to go over to the table where there's a little bit more space and it's not a wet counter, and you can fill it up for mommy? Okay, I'm thinking. I'm thinking like this size. I'm gonna. No, you know what? Maybe you better just stay here. I think I might want to wash this. Okay, so you scoop it out of here. Okay? And then you put it into the, like that. Let, let mama wipe off the counter because I, I don't know how much of a good aim you have. I love your help. Okay, so there it is. I'm going to move my water because you don't need any more salt water. Okay, Rita, I'm coming for your, your comment. I promise. <clears throat> here we go. Rita says, hello, I just subscribed this morning. I stumbled upon the cavity video and was going to go back when I had more time and watch more of them. Hey, Rita, thank you so much for that. I had a couple of negative comments on my, on my cavity videos um, today, which I deleted. And so that, that comment actually means a lot to me. All right, so we just added the one and a half cups of broth. We're going to add two cups of, ooh, two cups of sour cream. It's giving you guys a wild ride. So we're gonna add two cups of sour cream. You wanna try and buy full fat sour cream or make it yourself. Hey, you only out as I know, we gotta get more salt, don't we? Yeah, I'm putting it in Okay, yeah. yes. So my cavity healing journey, I'm saying I'm done. I need to um, confirm that with my naturopathic doctor. Um, but my teeth are to a point where um, healing is kind of stopped, meaning I think that it's done all the healing it could do. Um, because cavity holes never heal back the way the tooth was before the cavity. Um, and so my cavities were pretty deep, and so I do still have those holes. But the tooth is no longer sensitive. 
And um, I did mention in last week's, I'll do that really quick too. Hang on one second. I did mention in last week's video, um, I think this link is down below. I'll double check when we get off. It might not be, but this product, the Sole water with Himalayan um, crystal stones, totally revolutionized my healing with my cavities. On top of everything else that I put inside my videos, this stuff is the bomb. So I will make sure I put the link for it down in the description box. Um, it's not very expensive. You get a big box of rocks for that price. Um, and you just add it to water and let it sit for 24 hours and then you just use a tiny little amount and add it to your drinking water. This stuff has made my teeth um, feel so smooth and I believe it's rebuilding the enamel because I'm getting tons of 84 ionic minerals every time I drink it. Um, it just has really, really helped you guys. I don't endorse products unless they are amazing. This is one of them. So I'm going to give you guys the link and when you click on it, the website's a little bit weird. It'll take you to a... Um, that like their sister website, which is for um, herbal hormonal support. But if you scroll all the way down to the bottom, it'll say uh, pink Himalayan salt, like a little link. And if you click on that, it'll take you to the sister site, which is um, Symphony, Symphony Natural Health. And they sell the stones, okay? So I'll put that down below. This has been an amazing, groundbreaking um, thing with my teeth. They just feel so much stronger and um, like I said, smooth. It just feels so smooth. Okay, so I added two cups of the sour cream. I'm just gonna mix this up good. I think I added too much butter in the beginning. I'm gonna add just a little bit more sour cream. And that's why I should always follow the recipe because when you don't, Crystal, and you triple the amount of butter. What? You know what? Just keep on using your little scooper, buddy. Just use your little scooper because if you don't, it's going to go all over the place and then mommy's going to be sad. So I'm going to add about another half a cup of um, sour cream, you guys. So I'm making this friendly, tooth friendly on that subject um, because I'm not using a thickener. Instead, I'm using sour cream. And I'm going to serve it over green beans instead of potatoes. Um, one of the questions I get asked a lot is, why don't you just go brush your teeth after you get done eating potatoes and um, other things? Other heavy starches that I'm not allowed to have or sugars. And I understand where that question is coming from, but it basically it's coming from a, a person who views that their oral health has to only do with what is happening inside their mouth. And that's simply not true. Um, when you are uh, looking into the mouth, you can look into um, energy meridians. And each of your teeth is linked to a different section of your body. So like wisdom teeth linked to your heart. And I think it's your large intestine or small intestine. Um, so each one of your teeth are linked to organs that are within your body. And there's a link there that is pretty direct. And um, so there's that playing in, but then also you've got the fact that the tooth receives its nutrients from the blood source that goes into the center of the tooth. And um, blood sugar uh, is also getting to the tooth. So the idea behind the Cure Tooth Decay book, which I recommend for everybody who's healing their cavities, is that you're consuming a diet that is relatively stable in blood sugar. Um, so that you're not spiking your blood sugar, which is going into your teeth and feeding the bad bacteria that are eating it. Um, they're eating the cavity, the bad bacteria is eating through your tooth to get to that sugar. And when it's um, pooping, it poops out acid, basically, which is what is eating away your teeth. So the idea is to maintain a, uh, a stable blood sugar. And um, in doing that, you help to support a healing environment within the tooth. Now, there are other things that play in, like total body pH. Um, on the pH scale, if the body's on one side or the other, um, it will either help healing or hinder healing. And that all plays in as well. So if you're looking at healing your teeth, I strongly recommend getting that book. It's about $30, depending on where you buy it. It's okay, buddy. Just stick your little hand in and just grab it about $30 depending on where you buy it but it's worth every single penny there's so much information in there 
Um, it's just crazy. So make sure you get that. Um, that's where you should start. Okay. Rita says, I was going to make a list of what I might need to purchase. Yes. Oh. Okay, you're all done. He filled it up. <laughs> Okay, Julie says, what is the name of the book? So I lent it to my friend, but it's called uh, Cure, uh, Cure Tooth Decay. Uh, what's his name? Cure Tooth Decay, the blue book. Uh-oh. His last name starts with an R. Um, if you go back to my original video on healing um, tooth decay, it's like if you scroll all the way down to the very, very first one. It says healing cavities, like all the books you need or something is the name of the, of the title of the video. Um, I show you the book right on there. I just forget his name. It's like, starts first name starts with an R maybe? I don't know. Kathy, I know you're watching and I wish you could comment because you would be able to tell me. Um, oh, by the way, dinner's done, guys. So um, it's just a saucy thing down here. We got saucy. Oh, you guys can't see that. Ready. Thick. There, and the potatoes are into the oven. By by the Cure Tooth Decay book, um, I said his name, and like I said, lent the book out to a friend who's going to heal her cavities. Um, and um, that's number one because it tells you everything you need to buy in there. Uh, Rita says, it, I may be too old to fix it, and sugar has been an addiction for, of mine for years. Yeah, sugar is a huge addiction to break. That is for darn sure. Um, but I, I'm a firm believer that the body can heal and it knows how to heal because our bodies formed while we were in our mother's womb. Like there's an innate healing there when you have a cut on your hand. You're done. When you have a cut on your hand, you put a band aid on it, and it's not the band aid that heals, it's your. Um, so I believe that with the right nutrition, anybody can heal. Um, finding out what exactly your body needs. What's going on now, buddy? <laughs> he, got the salt. he got the salt. You're going to go watch the movie? You don't want to say hello? You okay, you're out of here. <laughs> don't take it personally. Okay, turn around. I'll take your little... You want to stay? Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> so... A shortcut, I guess I could go over the things that I bought for my cavities. I'll go grab it really quick since they're done. Where is all of it? <laughs> I've got a whole handful. And like I said in the beginning of this video, um, you can get all of these nutrients from food, but you're going to have to eat a ton of it. So I already eat a lot of nutrient dense foods, and so. Huh. I just wanted to add some, um, <laughs> I wanted to get my stuff through, um, supplements. <laughs> okay. So the first thing we take, no matter what, no matter if we have cavities or not, is fermented cod liver oil with the butter oil. This is cinnamon flavored. So this is one of the first things they talk about in that book that you need to purchase. Amazon sells this. This is, you shake it and you store it into the refrigerator. Okay, it's like a paste that you okay. take on a spoon. Okay. You want some? Okay, William would like to sample this. Just a moment. Okay. Are you gonna sample all of them? Yeah. Okay. So, the recommended dose is a half a teaspoon. You want it? Okay, there you are. And if he can do it, so can you. He's four. Um, half of a teaspoon a day on a regular basis, but when you're healing cavities, this needs to increase to three times a day. Um, and this is vitamin A, D, and because it has butter oil, it contains some vitamin K2. Sure, is it a little spicy? The cinnamon's a little spicy? Yeah. Okay, hang on. I'll get you some water. So that's the first thing you need to grab. And what I'm going to do is I will, uh, he takes cod liver oil every single day, uh, Rita. Um, basically, um, I'm going to put all the links down below of where to get this stuff. So this stuff you can buy from Green Pastures, but I'm going to talk about another product and they also sell this one on the same website. So it'll save you some shipping. So the next huge thing is the consumption of liver. I guess you guys could be looking at me instead of the counter. So the next big thing is the consumption of liver. Now, do I eat liver? Yes, I do. I eat a lot once a week, 
I eat two to four ounces once a week, and that's great to maintain health, but when you're healing, you need more. So um, I bought from this amazing company called Perfect Supplements. This is grass-fed um, powdered liver, uh, and it's tested for so there's no um, Roundup in their product, and it's also non-GMO, so they're just grass-fed cows, okay? And I love this company. Cows. And I will put the links down below. The cows. And the cows. Um, yes, there's cows there. I love this company for two reasons. Well, three reasons. But the major reason is, as far as our de their desiccated liver capsules go, you can buy them in a capsule. Or I have a large family. Um, so I buy it in this powder container, and it's super cheap. The other thing I love about the company is that if you buy, I think it's three, they give you 20% off. So it's like a huge cut um, for buying three of them. So I typically stock up, and I'm gonna warn you guys ahead of time, this stuff sells out all the time. So if you're interested in getting it, I will post the links tonight down in the description box. Okay, but you're going to want to order it as soon as possible because when they get out, they're out for like three weeks. It's a big bummer. Um, but anyway, I think this is like $28 a container, um, but don't quote me on that. So I'll put that down below. But this Perfect Supplements company also sells um, another product um, they, they sell the cod liver oil too, but they also sell another product, which I'm totally out of right now, which is the emu oil. That was another thing that was huge on my healing, and I went through a whole bottle um, and then kind of dropped off. But um, emu oil is also sold by the Perfect Supplements Company. It's just under um, the Walkabout brand um, on their website. There you go. So I will post all the links down below. But this is definitely something you need to be eating. Did you want some? Yeah. Okay. William's going to prove anyone can take it. You ready? I like it. So usually, <laughs> I take the powder and I put it in capsules. Okay? I have a little encapsulation machine. I showed you guys and I talked about that on my herbal class. Um, but this is really, really handy if you're going to sneak it into the food, like into meatloaf and, sh and such. Okay. So I need a new spoon. But William's not afraid of taking liver. Are you, buddy? Yeah. Okay, you want to open up? Uh, there you go. Now what? Want to show them your face? It's not gross, is it? Hmm, just going to eat it. It's liver. You want to drink? No. No? Okay, great. Awesome. It tastes good. It tastes good. Okay. <laughs> okay, so that is supplement number three. So we had colliver oil with... Um, Fermented collar oil with butter oil. We had emu oil and we had liver. Okay. Um, I'm probably forgetting something, but this is another thing I had to take, which was for me, it's magnesium, it's a source of magnesium because I already eat lots of um, raw milk and such, but I wanted to make sure I was getting enough I magnesium because you need calcium and magnesium to build bones. So um, this is the product that I bought. It's ionic I magnesium, it tastes horrible. But it's really good stuff. <laughs> but, uh, but I don't like that. You don't like it at all? Yeah. Okay. Um, and then, like I said, this stuff has just been the last 30 days, and I really feel like it's helped to rebuild the enamel on my teeth and remineralize <coughs> my teeth. So I'll put all those links down below, okay? And that's it. That is dinner. Hi, Ma is it Michellin? Michellin? Hi, Michellin. Thanks for jumping on. And Sharon, thanks for being here. And Rita was here. Whoops. Julie. Who else was here tonight? Hey, hey, Alabama was here tonight. Thank you guys so much for jumping on with me. I'm for cooking me. dinner. I'm and we'll have a, a goat video coming I'm out me. soon. Um, oh, and vitamin C. I forgot. I am taking vitamin C in the form I'm of rose I'm hips. I'm um, you know what, buddy? I have some power that's not in capsules. I just got some today. Where did I put it? Oh, it's in here. Hang on. So, rose hips, really, really good spot to get rose hip stuff. Um, organic is vitacost.com. They sell it in like one pound packages for a really good price. And a lot of times they have like 12% off, 50% off, just depending on the day. So, um, this is rose hips powder. And I would typically take the rose hips powder and I would encapsulate it using my capsule machine. Like I said, I'm not going to go over that tonight because that's in my video for herbs. But William would like to have some rose hips because 
He was tasting everything for you. He loves this stuff. I like everything. Okay, here we go. Are you ready? Ready? There it is. Is that mm. yummy? I know you like that. You just want to smell it. Mmm, smells good, huh? <laughs> it's a little, a little bit tart. Anyway, they sell both the rose hips powder that you can put in capsules like I do and take it as a vitamin C supplement. Or um, I also bought the rose hips. Hang on. Rose hips yeah. that are seeded. Okay, you can buy them with the seeds and everything in them. But once again, those seeds are going to have the phytic acid and stuff still in them. So I just buy seedless rose hips. And then I bought this bag also. It's a whole one pound from Vitacost.com. So it's a good spot to stock up on some of that stuff. It's a little bit cheaper than Mountain Rose Herbs. But if you need herbs, I'll put that link down below as well. I have an affiliate link now for uh, Mountain Rose Herbs. So if you ever need to order anything from Mountain Rose Herbs, um, use my link, please. It doesn't cost you guys anything. And it gives me a little bit um, from you guys' order. So, All right, William, now what? Are you ready to go? Should we go and eat? <laughs> All right. Well, thanks for joining us, you guys. You guys have a great night. And I'll see you guys maybe next week. I'm going to keep you posted on that. Um, keep an eye out on the community page. I'm supposed to be getting my Azure order, and I don't know what day it's coming. So if it comes on Monday, then we'll have a cooking class on Tuesday. If it comes on Tuesday evening, I'm not going to have a cooking class. So just keep your eyes open to the channel. Thanks so much for joining me, and I'll see you guys next time. There they go. <laughs>